Hello, Savannah. Thank you for tuning in to WRUULP. Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. Welcome to Wednesday afternoon. You just reached the hump and you just tuned into Real Estate Real Talk with myself, Julia M. Spencer. Welcome. And Daniel Ivanov here in the studio. Say hello. Yeah, hey, happy new year. Happy. Haven't been here in a while. Yes, happy new year, everybody. This is our... This is our first show for no. I did no. one last week. You did. By you myself. did. I but was together, this was yeah. Yeah, you're you're sick. Yeah. <laughs> here we are. We're here now. On our show, we talk about anything and everything related to real estate investing. Anything about how to be a landlord, how to do short-term vacation rentals, how to invest in properties. I do a lot of investing in tax sale foreclosures and anything and everything in between. And on today's show, I was actually debating what we're going to do this show about. So we have a lot of different little things that we kind of wanted to touch on, but we haven't thoroughly researched. So we're going to give you a couple of pointers, I guess, more or less, for you to do your own research, but also maybe a heads up of things to come. But also kind of a little bit at hog, I guess. We're... We're going to play a little bit of music in between our segments, but we're also going to give you a little bit of an update kind of where we're standing because on everything. Our, our story is kind of like always unfolding and there's always something new going on. So real estate investing and running our Airbnbs and uh, anything related to real estate is our full-time job. That's what we do. Yep. So this show is actually kind of just part of an extension of what we do every day and we kind of share it with you so you you see the same problems we run into maybe see them down down the line it's and then you'll know a- how to solve it audio biography <laughs> pretty much <laughs> exactly audio biography right radio radio, radio biography yeah. radio radiography <laughs> something biography like fm something something like that yeah so yeah so what's so right before this show like right before we went on the air we just got an estimate for three and a half thousand dollars, three thousand six hundred dollars, which we didn't know we owed up until about fifteen minutes from now. Yeah, so, <laughs> so let's uh, talk about this for a minute because uh, basically, if you are, and this is what I said on the ride over here, basically, if you are get into real estate, forget the fact that anybody tells you it's a um, passive income or passive investing income if you own real estate because there's no such thing as passive investment there's no such thing passive income investment i don't think there was a passive income whatsoever not at all this is absolutely not passive so we it's more aggressive it's (laughs) it's very much hands-on and especially if you're dealing with a lot of turnover like with short-term vacation rentals but it doesn't actually even matter because in this case it could be long-term tenants it could be short-term vacation rentals doesn't matter stuff some stuff you just have to pay for and right now we're faced with a uh, with an overflowing septic tank of all things so let's yeah. talk about that why don't you tell us a little bit about it about yeah it. so um, well obviously in Savannah if you uh, have a property here in Savannah a lot of them are going to the sewer to the city sewer Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, we do own the house in uh, Conyers, Georgia, which is uh, kind of southeast of Atlanta. And it's a quiet neighborhood far away from the city, about 40 minutes from Atlanta. It's in the woods. Yeah, it's, it's in way the woods. out in the so very there is quiet, no sep- nice. Yeah, there is no sewer system whatsoever, and usually in those areas. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody has a septic tanks, and um, that house is, uh, what was it built in, 74, I believe? Yep. It was about in the 70s. Yeah. And it's been remodeled since. It's very nice. Yeah, it's very nice. Very good house. Um, purchased Solid. it on the year 2015. I assume the septic tank was taken care of. Again, do not assume. Check yeah, everything. Yeah, septic tanks. Um, just in case you guys want a, like a little bit of a, a background on septic tanks. So if you have a property that's located outside any specific city limits or in this case it's it's really in the woods like mm-hmm. literally in in the woods and it's got what is it like two acres or something you got a lot yeah, it's of almost, it's almost two acres 1.96 or something like yeah that. there's a lot of space around it so it's not very feasible to connect houses like this to the normal sewer system because the lines would just run forever and yeah. there's a lot of maintenance so people people have septic tanks which are basically self-containing 
places to get rid of the waste water yeah. coming from the houses, which then gets filtered, yeah. and the solids stay, I guess, in the septic tank, and the liquids go, go in into the ground, into the ground, or some sort. Of, and, and I'm not an expert, so please don't quote me. But every once in a while, I mean, I believe it's what did you say, like they, five they, years, seven years? On average, five, five, seven years, and also depends on the size of the tank, and it of course, depends on the size of the family, when the how, mm -hmm. how often the house is used. So this house is a four bedroom, mm -hmm. three baths. But it's a big house. It's got it's two water heaters, two air conditioners. I mean, yeah, it's it's so two living rooms. A so lot it's, of it's it's, it's, a, it's a big house. Yeah, real estate. And, um, so every five years, and uh, that tank is about they said thousand gallon, which is a very standard tank, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah. They're saying about five to seven years. That's that's a good time to do it. Mm -hmm. And we've been wanted to do it since uh, the house was purchased, 2015. So it's been seven years. So we thought, you know. Time, ki time came. Yeah, we kind of thought that when it was purchased, that the original owner had cleared it out then, yeah. and it was good to go. But I don't, I don't know if, I don't know if you remember if that was I, in I your I contract I or if you didn't ask about it. Yeah, but something to remember next time if you purchase <laughs> a house with a septic tank, make sure that one of your requirements before closing is that the original owner gets it cleared out. That's yeah. what I would. And it, and it doesn't cost that much. It looks like uh, it on average it's about four hundred dollars for the thousand uh, dollar for for the thousand gallon tank, mm -hmm. uh, unless there is the issues, and that's what happened. Yeah. So the guys arrived. They dig the tank out. And and by the way, if you don't know where your tank is, uh, usually the professionals will, will can figure it out. Uh, worst comes to worst, they can go to the city mm -hmm. and request the. It's a public record. They can request the. Uh, pretty much the breakdown on your building, the mm -hmm. blueprint, and it tells you exactly where the tank is. Yeah. So the guys found the tank, digged it out, uh, and uh, I can actually even look at, uh, so pretty much it's an uh, old tank, and it's not only needed to be uh, pumped, it's actually over filling, I guess he's saying. Mm -hmm. But also there is something broken. There is a pipe which runs to the I guess into the ground and that pipe is old and it's not to the cold because it's just the old tank that's don't be surprised if you haven't done it in a while mm -hmm. because I guess city coordinates and the codes in the counties change and you might run into it and so right now we are looking at $3,600 repairs and pumping mm -hmm. the tank. Mm -hmm. And it started with three hundred and ninety-five dollars this morning. Yeah, and and usually what what it says online, like I'm looking at uh, on Google and Wikipedia, that maintenance costs are usually three to six hundred dollars every few years, uh, which can still be cheaper than the municipal sewer. Actually, so people are always asking, is it better to have a sewer tank or not? It's just another maintenance thing, and if you're not used to it, and this is the only house that this you business owns that has a sewer. And I mean, the septic tank, and I've never had to deal with it, nor have I ever, I mean, I've heard of it. I just never had to deal with it. So I figured you send somebody, you pay them the money and you're done. But now we're having an issue because this house is very old. And uh, mm -hmm. from what I understood, I was on the phone call earlier when the man called. Um, because of the age of the system, they have to, um, they're not able to remove all the solids that accumulated at the bottom of the tank. So they will have to dig up the pipe, I guess, that drains everything at the bottom. And that is the part that's going to be very expensive. And you can actually go ahead and pull up the estimate that we got to see what it actually says. We can read it on the air. So yeah, you can kind of know how much it would their estimate went for and what we're actually are being asked to pay right now. And, and this is basically a standstill of our business in this particular house. We can't rent it right now because it was... Pretty we much full, and what he said on the phone is that it was actually a couple of inches over its fill level, and we would have seen problems very quickly. And by the way, if you have a septic system and you don't know what are the signs that your septic tank is full, here they are. Your drains are taking forever, for example, to drain. Standing water over the septic tank outside in the yard it's usually, uh, in our case, it's really close to the kitchen window in the backyard. Yeah. Bad smells coming from your yard, or obviously the sewer, the sewage is, is uh, creeping up to the backyard. You don't want that to happen. 
Um, and the you, worst is uh, when your toilet's going to back up. And, and your toilet, if your toilet backs up and you have guests or tenants, that's, you know, that's really bad. Um, but um, you're, you hear gurgling water, that's another sign. Uh, you have a sewage backup, obviously, that's <laughs> the big sign. And, uh, yeah, those are some of the things that will tell you that yeah, a warning sign that you may have a full septic And he did mention he saw, like, paper towels and stuff like that. Right. Those are the things you don't want to throw in, uh, like, uh, grease if you fry something. Yeah. You try to mm, put it on the ground, take it out somewhere. Yep. Septic tanks don't like any of those beautiful things. Mm -hmm. And if you don't maintain it, obviously, you have a very costly mess on your hands. Uh, me, us being uh, newbies to the, to this, even though in real estate forever, never had to deal with a septic tank. So here we go. What is the actual invoice if you have it? Okay, yeah, I have it in front of me. So right now, pump thousand gallon single compartment tank is three hundred and ninety five dollars, mm -hmm. uh, which is reasonable because online it says somewhere between three hundred and six hundred. Yep. So uh, this is where the big expense comes in. Replace tailpipe from tank to drain field and out to let bamboo tea. I don't know what bamboo tea is, but that's $1,750. So mm -hmm. that's the pipe we're talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then it's a backup drain field to remove solid waste. Well, I guess that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. It's $1,500. So the estimate total is three hundred dollars three thousand six hundred and forty five dollars flat mm -hmm. uh, so this is and it's actually I mean they're gonna have to dig that up and they brought the excavator already to get the tank out mm -hmm. but with a pipe my understanding they're gonna use the shovels because they cannot use the excavator for that yeah because they'll probably break it if they do yeah. uh, i don't know i'm not i'm not an expert on this i'm just kind of sharing with you guys how much it actually costs if you have a problem with the septic system and just the tank be, be prepared especially if you have an old house this this one was built in the 70s i have absolutely no idea when the last time it was emptied i mean we took it into the business only a year and a couple months ago you've had it for six years yeah, and I lived all up together. There with my family it was only like me, my ex-wife, and my kid. And then I lived up there by myself for like three years. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really much usage. Yeah, yeah. And now that we're having it converted to a, an Airbnb, you know, and, and we have families, families six, eight, sometimes ten people staying there. And now it's it's at the brink. So we got to take care of this. That's absolutely because it's it stops the business mm -hmm. right now because we can't rent it right now and. Mm -hmm. uh, we got the MLK holiday coming in. That's a big weekend, long weekend. Uh, mm -hmm. Valentine's Day. I mean, we're stepping into a good season again. So, so why exactly? So here's another like something I want to share is what's the common cause then of septic system failure? Other than, of course, you know, not maintaining it. That's pretty obvious. But most septic systems fail because of inappropriate design, um, but also because of soil-based systems looks like that's one we have because it says something about a drain field uh -huh. towards the back um, they're installed on sites with inadequate or inappropriate soil which I, I guess doesn't absorb properly mm -hmm. and excessive slopes or high ground water tables which you know the water would be seeping further down if the water table was lower but it was on a high level and it's kind of hard well, we are on the highway because the, the house is located actually on the, I am a number two, that house is number two in the whole neighborhood on the high level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think my neighbor's house next door, Andy's, it's the, the highest one. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, another question that's here, actually, once you have a septic system, the lifespan Every of it, years, yeah. if you maintain it, is anywhere from 15 to 40 years. So how long the system lasts depends on the number of factors, including construction material, soil, acidity, water table, maintenance practices, and several others. So I'm learning this uh, he right as here as well. on <laughs> the air, <laughs> my <laughs> dear people. Uh, and I don't, you know, honestly, I don't even think there's a lot of places around here in Savannah that have septic tanks that I'm, I'm not sure exactly how things are handled out there on Tybee, but for sure on the islands because we're... We're already so close to uh, water bodies of water. I don't think we have 
I don't think Antibi will have a septum tank side. It right? would be, oh. I would say it's, well, everything on, on Whitmarsh Island where the properties are that we have in this business are all sewer. sewer yeah. And they're actually paid to the city of Savannah, believe it or not, even though we're not incorporated city of Savannah. And of course, down downtown here, that's all sewer. Oh, I saw. I did see the treatment plan on uh, on, on Tybee. Yeah, on the, on the left side. on Islands Expressway. Yeah. Well, that's the one right there, and on Tybee as well. Right before um, there is a beach, right before the uh, lighthouse, there is a tr uh, sewer treatment plan up there. Uh, I think. I don't know. I'll have to check. Or maybe that. it's a waste management. I don't remember. It was something, something up like there. that. Yeah. Yeah. So well, that's our big thing. So the yeah. good thing, though, is this is extra expense that's coming our way. It looks like the uh, company is willing to finance some sort of payment plan, which, I mean, we really don't have much of a choice. We can, of course, go shop around a little bit, but every day wasted on this is our place is sitting empty. Yeah. And that's that's bad for business. And <coughs> Going out of business is good for business. Right, right. <laughs> Right, so we need to take care of that today. So just just a little bit of a, a you know a jovial fact here, <laughs> I guess you could say, if you want to get into real estate investing, just really please don't ever expect that you think that you're gonna have a passive investment. Every single property that you add to your portfolio is another can of worms which uh, it's not really a can of worms because you don't know whether it's worms in there or scorpions or something else. <laughs> you just don't know until you open it. And once you open it, they're all over the place and you got to you gotta deal with it. So there's no passive investment income, not with real estate for sure. And the more real estate you have, if you decide, of course, to manage it yourself. But if you, even if you have somebody to help you manage this, if we had a manager, that manager would for sure... Um, basically ask you questions whether or not you want to go with this particular repair right now we would get a phone call from our manager we have still have to do the same exact thinking process and financial budgeting and planning so uh, these are the kinds of things that'll pop up over time and you will have to deal with so no no passive investment with real estate for sure no no such Absolutely. such thing. <laughs> and I just got the confirmation to do offer the uh, financial assistant application they sent me. Ah, perfect. So yeah, let's do that. We're gonna have to we'll handle have to that and and soon as possible. Yeah. So anyway, I wasn't gonna do the show about this today because we have a couple other things that I wanted to talk about, but uh, we don't want to jump from topic to topic. We are uh, within. Actually, we have another like six minutes too for the bottom of the hour. So yeah, I think well what we, we can we do. We just ran into the air conditioner situation as well because the weather is changes. Right, right. That's another maintenance thing that we need to share with you. But let's do that after the break because yeah. we're almost at the bottom of the hour. I'm going to play some break music. We're going to catch our breath. You're listening to Real Estate Real Talk with Julia M. Spencer and Daniil Ivanov here in the studio. Please stay on. Don't go anywhere. Stay Just warm. Stay warm. It's cold out there. Do some dancing. <laughs> <laughs> right. And we'll be right back after this. Beginning on November 17th and running through mid-January, Vocation Gallery at the corner of Liberty and Bull Streets is holding a 300 and under sale with an emphasis on holiday shopping. All purchases during this period will benefit WRUU. Gallery hours are 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. weekdays and 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturdays. You can also find and shop at Location Gallery online at www.locationgallery.net. 107.5 WRUU, in touch with the United Way. We all know that these have been trying times for all of us, but there are quite a few of our friends and neighbors who've been hit particularly hard by the pandemic and business closures. And that's where the United Way of the Coastal Empire has been very helpful, offering support, but they can't do it alone. The United Way of the Coastal Empire needs your help now more than ever so they can feed, shelter, and provide other necessities for those who need it most. Every dollar you donate will go to helping your neighbors and their families. For more information about the United Way of the Coastal Empire, go online to uwce.org. This reminder in the public spirit from Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul, WRUU. Are you hesitant about receiving the coronavirus vaccination? Contact your physician. It is estimated that 97% of all physicians have been vaccinated. What do they know that you don't know? Or talk to a friend or relative who has been vaccinated and find out why they have taken it. 
For more information, contact www.cdc.gov. What does it mean when we say that WRUU is a community radio station? It doesn't just mean that we invite the community to create programming. And it doesn't just mean that we are a voice for the community. It also means that we are counting on the community to keep us going. And you are the community. Almost all of our modest budget comes from small annual or monthly donations from listeners like you. You get to enjoy our community-focused programming because many others have stepped forward to do their part. Now do your part by joining our community of listener donors. Go to WRUU.org right now and make a one-time or monthly donation. And thank you for supporting Savannah's community radio station, 107.5 FM. And we're back with Real Estate Real Talk with Julia M. Spencer and Daniil Ivanov here in the studio. Thank you for staying with us. You're listening to WRUULP Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. And on today's show, we're talking about septic tanks <laughs> and... AC. What's the next problem? Bring, AC. bring it on. <laughs> AC. We brought it on, on AC. <laughs> that can, that, uh, what was we what have was two two AC problems this week that yes, we had to deal with. And and this is usually the time of the year we don't have to deal with AC too much because, you know, you heat a little bit here in Savannah in the wintertime. But for the most part, it's it's pretty mild winters. So you don't really need all that much heat. You know, air conditioning is really the big kicker. Usually, yeah, usually it's the summertime. Air mm-hmm. conditioner, people cranking at you at 60 and freeze it up but sure enough just imagine like us standing there and somebody with a big slapping hand one slap came from the right in terms of the septic tank two slaps from the left <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the ac so what's going on with the acs this well week? first of, first one we had the actually house uh that was i don't even remember what it was they had oh they replaced the whole unit yep because somebody uh who either installed it no 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 no. it wasn't an installation problem one of the maintenance guy who came in and worked on it a couple months ago rewired everything and fried the whole unit <laughs> yep and that so was what we were having experience with is it's nice and hot and hot air is blowing through the vents and then all of a sudden Bam, so cold. switch to cold. <laughs> and you never know. You don't, it's, it's, it's a gamble. <laughs> was that, was that it's system? a Russian roulette of, or <laughs> yeah. of AC systems. So it was Never know what temperature you might get today. <laughs> but we got lucky on that one. We got lucky because the insurance covered that. That was good. Yeah, so we called our third technician. In fact, I went back through all the statements, and we had three different air conditioning companies service that unit in the last couple months. The first two were fired. That's what the third one told me. Really? So I I don't know about that. But basically, they all did something different, and they all did, like, their own thing. And one of them actually came, and he had absolutely no clue. He was standing there with a phone Googling stuff. Oh, yeah. Asking you I questions, right? And I was helping him to take the fan off. Like, I actually, he didn't have any tools. So yeah, I had, to had no my tools. tools off the truck. Like, <laughs> we're, we're not going to tell you what companies these are. You're going to have to, you know, contact <laughs> us privately to, <laughs> to tell you this. But yeah. <laughs> we're not going to do it on the so air. So pretty much I took the air conditioner apart myself. And right. The technician was just kind of like, hey, thanks, man. <laughs> and, the, and it wasn't working. Like, that whole week, that uh, holiday week, I don't know where was I. And uh, I'm like, well, I don't know, you know, over the holidays, nobody was setting any appointments. People, you know, show up without any skills or tools. And, and finally, we got a guy that came in, he looked at it, he's like, mm, replace. Yeah, he didn't even play around. He said, I, I'm not messing with I'm this. I'm not fixing this. This is, this is, this is enough beyond <laughs> fixing. <laughs> yeah, so we got the new unit, which is good. and uh, The outside yeah. unit, by the way, mind you guys, because I guess an HC... HVAC system consists of an outside unit and an inside air handler well, it, it, or something it, like it, that? It, it depends, yeah, because the new ones we have in 37th Street and 48th Street is going to be just one. Uh, no, there's an inside unit, in one. too, in the closet. No, that's just the, uh, no, that's, so that's vent not something. Unit. It's, it's a vent. It's the unit that's actually the heat and the cold okay. in, in one unit. So it's a new one. But the older one, the one we mm-hmm. it's we have the heat heating system upstairs mm-hmm. in the closet and uh, the AC actually Outside. down there. Yeah. But it, so, but it's it, it's pretty good. So it, it fixed. It's it's good, which is very interesting. The house is very big. How many square foot it is? 
2200. Yeah, and it's almost the same size as a Conyers, but Conyers has two units and this one has one mm -hmm. and it's still pulling it. Yeah. It's pretty good. But another air conditioner system went down just recently. It didn't went down, it actually was making a screeching noise. It was in a map maker house. Yeah. It was working, everything works perfectly, but it makes every two minutes, it eee. makes, yeah, exactly. It's kind runs, of. Runs, 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 runs good. And eee. it's like, yeah, it's exactly what noise she is. It, it sounds like something stuck. Like somebody put a, put a stick inside a vent and the vent is trying yeah, to go. Or like something when you switch like the, if you ever drove like a manual, like a stick shift, right. when you s wrong, like you didn't put the clutch all the way in. Yeah. It's like a gears grinding. Yeah. That's the sound. It's just painful to hear. Yeah. And it comes out every two minutes and the unit is right by the wall. So the guest actually was not happy because they, they can sleep. hear it through outside yeah. every two minutes you can't really sleep so uh the same company showed up and they did a fantastic job uh it was just uh the guy explained to me every two or three years especially when the temperature drops and i mean when the temperature is not consistent when it goes from hot to cold back and forth which is what we had in the last week or so yep and it's pretty much um compressor that what there is like a little a uh, little part not really sure what exactly it is but it's have something to do with a compressor uh something coal or something I, I i really don't don't really know but that part is actually goes out when the temperature changes the guy explained to me it's like a car battery mm -hmm. when the temperature changes drastically uh it happens mm -hmm. so keep an eye on that but that's a easy repair they all carry those those parts i mean it was not even five minutes he he replaced it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's still very just you know watch out that's that's a lot of breakage going on right now um that's your heat it's your air septic tanks we already talked about it and of course pipes you know we don't get that freezing up here but if you're in the mountains or atlanta area yeah if it goes down to zero then you should definitely make sure you run your water through your pipes yeah absolutely. Uh, every like don't this don't leave you like if your house is empty for a couple of days kind of kind of run it keep your um heat don't turn off your heat completely and maybe even let the water faucets drip a little bit because that mm -hmm. keeps the water moving especially in the in the areas like our water in uh rockdale county and yeah, it costs nothing it's mm -hmm. like 19 dollars a month even with the pool is i think 30 dollars yeah, in summertime yeah. So that's that. That's so we maintenance. Got, <laughs> that's maintenance there. I mean, that's the ugly part of real estate investing, honestly. And that's the part I always had so many apprehensions about because, you know, I like doing the paperwork. I don't mind doing the taxes all that much. I like buying properties. I like selling properties. But the maintenance is what, what gets you every time. So if you're not a fan of maintenance or you don't know, how to handle it through other sources or insurances or a, a manager, <laughs> you're going to have a really bad time and you're not going to enjoy yourself. So uh, I'm, I'm really glad you're on the team and I'm really glad we have all these other people on the team that are uh, handling stuff because if it was me by myself, I'd just be selling right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sell everything. <laughs> I'm going to Mexico. Sell. Sell, <laughs> sell, exactly. And then I'll have to find myself another job, I guess. So, anyways, so yeah, so let's talk a little bit about some other stuff here. Uh, we are at twelve forty, so yeah. we got about mm, 15, 20. twenty minutes or so. Yeah. Let's play some music. Uh, let's talk about some other stuff that yeah, we're yeah. Let's talk about getting after our the hands music in. Maybe what we, we we kind of what we researched, and we're gonna research more. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll get the interview going. A new new business venture we ran across here this week yeah. through social media. So, uh, has it. to do with short term vacation rental mm -hmm. slash timeshare. The two combined. So let's talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be right back. Stay on. And we're back with Real Estate Real Talk with Julia M. Spencer and Daniel Ivanov. On today's show, we're talking about maintenance stuff that you need to worry about in the winter months as well as uh, really any time. So our first segment was about septic tanks and the issue we're running into right now, trying to fix a old septic tank that's in a house that's built in the 70s that really hasn't been maintained much over the years, especially not spe 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 <laughs> specifically not since we had it 
Okay, I'm back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, air conditioning systems that uh, tend to act up in the cold months, believe it or not. And uh, we, we just had a little discussion here in the break uh, about whether or not insurances cover this, because this is maybe a question that you have as well. Well, we're and talking about septic tank. The right, ACs back really covered. quick to the ACs, yeah. yeah. Uh, the septic tanks, I mean, that uh, there is obviously one insurance, of course, that you will have on your home, which is your homeowner's insurance, which covers damages uh, sustained from, you know, whatever, if you have a leak in the roof or you know, a fire or something like that, you know, this Tree kind of thing, down on the big, roof. big things that will happen. Yeah. And you usually have sort of a high deductible, but in this case, you know, it might still be worth it to file a claim, but we don't know if that's covered. I do believe though that it is, if there's an actual breakage in the um, tank, and I, I almost even want to say an insurance adjuster will come out and say, well, when's the last time you cleaned it out? When's the last time you maintained it? Oh, you don't know? Well, we're not covering it. That's kind of thing that they're looking for. Yeah. Same thing with American Home Shield, which is the home warranty company that uh, some people get that covers your appliances, your plumbing, your electrical, your HVAC system. And we're, we're checking to see if, if a su um, septic tank is actually covered. I think that is actually an extra expense that you have to purchase on your plan. I don't think we have it. I don't know for sure. I have to check. We'll look at the contract. And yeah, then yeah. Um, we'll, we'll report back on that. But again, I think all of these things cover you only if there is a damage already done, like a a breakage, a leakage, uh, after, after a, the fact. a bursting, a bursted system, if there is already a backup and all those things, which we don't have. We're still in the maintenance uh, stage. stage and a very late maintenance stage. So that's uh, some of those things that, that you need to check up on. But um, Which we'll check up on it. As soon, well, as, uh, as soon as we're off the air, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, let's talk a little bit about what we kind of alluded to at the beginning of the, right before this break, regarding the, um, the new business. this new company that yeah. I ran across on Facebook, I believe it was, and they're called ReAlpha. And we called them earlier today to see if we can get an interview with the owner. We didn't get a message back or anybody, nobody picked up the phone. But what it is essentially is a... Um, company that's trying to bring the wealth that you can obtain from owning real estate to the greater masses you know obviously if you want to get into the vacation rental business airbnb vrbos and stuff you have to have properties that you can actually post there and rent out and a lot of people have basically this big barrier this big wall that you can't get through because you have to get the properties and you, that costs a lot of money so what they're trying to do is get people over that barrier and get basically a syndicate of people together to buy properties or else get a bunch of people together to put money in a pool and then purchase properties that they recommend to then rent out on Airbnb for everybody to share the profits. Now, my first thought about this was, ta-da! No, no, not a bad idea. It's the timeshare <laughs> industry. It's yeah. again timeshares, but in this case, not timeshares for your own vacation. It's timeshares for uh, renting. It, it's a business timeshare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, is an, which is, you know, a different slant on it. It's still a timeshare. And you all know, if you listen to my show or watch my YouTube channel, my opinion on timeshares as an investment strategy. Uh, you have a lot of expense, yeah. uh, but you don't really have a lot of control. And your profits are mm, marginal, just like your investment. Yeah. So, um, so we're checking on that. Um, we kind of we, we we read up on it, and we as 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 you said, we're leaning towards the more like pretty much timeshare. Mm -hmm. And but we want to hear from the owner of the company. Just give us an overview. Maybe there is something we're missing mm -hmm. from what we read, what we researched. Um, Instead of timeshare, I think we should probably say it's not a timeshare but it's a business ownership share so it's owning really, yeah. business ownership and we we have a lot of questions already popped in our head like as i said we were talking about the control mm -hmm. who controls everything how i mean there's so many how maintenance, who's maintenance. Uh, management who who somebody how's, has to have an overview because if you have too many people staring the pot you're gonna get yeah. 
a mess. So that's that's why we want to first before we start bashing, or we're not really bashing, but before we mm. s- yeah. start figuring, I mean, giving our opinions, we want to actually hear from. Uh, mm-hmm. As soon as I get, we we will try to record that interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It won't be an interview, probably overview first, and then we'll yeah. get some lead on questions, I guess. Yeah. And if you want to check it out, so the company's name is Re Alpha. And that's, you spell it just like you say it, R-E, and then the alpha. word alpha. Yeah, like a Greek. Uh, uh, but uh, and then and if you know anything about it more than we do, we gladly hear from yeah. you. If you, maybe you're already in that business, would right. be great, you know. So, but what I understand is that they retain 51% ownership in all the properties. Mm-hmm. They recommend the properties. The property, the company is owned by an IT guy who previously had other startups that they started in the IT business arena. And what they're doing is they're using some sort of uh, artificial intelligence algorithm to select properties and markets that are likely to appreciate and value, as well as are good candidates for the vacation rental, short-term vacation rental business or Mm. seasonal rental business so they're fully furnished and and ready to go and from what i understand your um your cost for entry into becoming one of their partners is anywhere um well i I saw different prices quite honestly i saw tiers right right i saw something about two and a half thousand dollars for the syndicate where you're in a group of people uh, supposedly buying very specific properties. So you are in a group of maybe a hundred other people owning this particular property. And um, then there's the other pool where you just basically invest less. And I've seen money thrown around on the websites between a hundred and a thousand dollars a pop where you thrown in together with a bunch of other people and they select the properties and they do everything. And then I read some comment where somebody said it's not a good deal because investors are putting up 90% of the money but retain only 10 or 15% of ownership. So all of these numbers I'm throwing out at you. I don't, I have not verified them, but this is something that is, uh, it's kind of piqued my curiosity, obviously, because we are in this business. But at the same time, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of space for interpretation, but also a lot of uh, possibility, opportunity for abuse, because good ideas, you know, are are a prime for being abused. Yeah. For people that are unsuspecting or can't crunch the numbers or read the documents, so uh, we're we're very. I s- I try to stay open-minded because in general, the way I think about it, it seems like a very good idea. But everything that's a really really good idea. You have to be careful about <laughs> the free cheese. You remember the free cheese is always only in the mousetrap. So. Right, the free <laughs> cheese is in the mousetrap. So we got to check. We got to check on it. So if you want to do this yourself, of course, the uh, again, it's Re Alpha. They have an app. I, I I downloaded the app actually, but I'm not getting very far because they give you like blurred images of properties that you can select, and then I click okay, I want to become a member. And, and it doesn't qualify, go anywhere. Right? You've got f- oh, th- is it an application? It's a, it's an app, but it's not really fully functioning. So all the the buttons that are on there are not really working yet. So well, I, le- I left this guy. Uh, I think his name is Richard, who the voicemail. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see what he's going to respond. Yeah. And uh, we definitely will we'll, 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 we'll get more information by by the next show for sure. Yeah, I definitely that. want to know what all, what it, what it's all about. That's very curious, very interesting. Yeah. And uh, of course, I read up on the timeshare home re- rentals as well, mm-hmm. which was very. I, I I don't really see the separation in it. Again, we need to talk to him and see the yeah. overview. What exactly w- w- what separates that company from what what I looked at yeah. already? Companies which were existing since like 2020, I think Koala. I looked at it. It's uh, mm. very. Uh, I don't know. To me, I'm thinking it's more like other way for the timeshare people to sell the timeshare that's what i'm thinking what's yeah happening and it's not here. really a vacation time that they're selling they're selling business ownership so 
it's the concept is the same, but like the, gym membership the, the item that they're show. selling is different. Yeah, and it's you know it's kind of like you know gym membership same 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 thing. You know you're but just getting paid a little bit. I I will a little we'll bit see. yeah we'll a little dividend or something like that. Are, how the I'd like to see the numbers too. So this is something from a very specific, and I'm very hands on. I mean, you throw me a long document, I'm just gonna be like, uh, I'm not gonna read that, but. If you tell me, you know, a person that actually has signed up and show me their profit yeah, and loss so statement for this particular investment, then I want to see, you know, that's what I want to see. Let's look under the hood. Right, exactly. All right, so that brings us to the uh, end of our show here. If you just tuned in or tuned in within the last couple of minutes, you are listening to Real Estate Real Talk. This is a show that we have once a week on Wednesdays around lunchtime, right after the happiness message by Robert Pauliki. And we talk about anything and everything related to real estate investing. If you've missed the show, versions of the show or uh, previous uh, episodes are on the WRU.org website under archives. You can also catch them on my YouTube channel. Very easy to find Julia M. Spencer and find me on social media too. I did get my old email to work again. Woo-hoo! So you mm-hmm. can email me again. It's real estate at juliamspencer.com. I will get the message. And you can also reach me through my website, which is also just my name, juliamspencer.com and go to the uh, contact tab on the top and you can send me a message that way. And it goes directly to my email, so I'll be able to see it right away. Please leave me comments, suggestions, good, bad, ugly. I take them all on my YouTube channel or anywhere else that you can find me. And yeah, we'll be back again next Wednesday. Um, do you have anything else? No, just stay about? stay classy, stay warm. Uh, we actually going to go get some lavender tea right now. Lavender tea at the uh, Fox. Fish and what is it? Fox, fox and something fox, fox and fig. That's what it is. Fox like. and fig. Is I don't know what it's called down the street there. Yeah. Lavender tea is my they favorite. They a good tea up there. Yeah. yeah. So that's where we're going. So till next week. Free guide to real estate investing. Visit juliamspencer.com.